Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. It's time to get stuff squared away for gardening season. I mean, it's time to plant some of the cooler weather stuff. It is not near about time to start planting tomatoes and all that kind of stuff here yet. But it is end of February, and I always do some pruning this time of year. Now, I'm not going to prune hard this year, and I didn't last year. Uh, because we have struggled with fruit with the late colds the last two or three years, I mean, they just ain't been no fruit. So, and it is not to do with the pruning. It is because we've had some really late cold weather. So my apple tree, I'm not going to really go messing with it a lot. I've got some peach trees you saw clips of in full bloom. Some, the cold and frost got some of the blooms, but not all of them. I covered them up, but we, we'll just have to see how it works out. This is a wisteria. Uh, this is a special bush to me. The old bulldog that I had, we bought this at like, I think it was at the time, Fred's Dollar Store. Uh, or it could have could have been, yeah, I about know it was at Fred's Dollar Store because I bought some grapes. They had them out front on a rack. And this wisteria bush, and I love the purple wisteria and uh, the way it looks when they bloom. Well, it, it didn't get planted for like two years because it sat in a coffee can out here at the edge of my shed where water dripped in it. And that bulldog, he would drink that water out of that plant is the only water. He, he'd go look around. He'd walk by two water buckets to drink that water. So I just left it there. I was like, well, let, well when he died, we planted the tree. Um, and this is it. And I did not want it to take off and run up like a vine up the side of a tree or on trellises and all that. I wanted it to be a a tree. So what I'm going to do is you see it's getting straggly and long. We're going to prune some stuff off of it so that to kind of get it going back up because it has been neglected and not, not been trained like it should. So I'm going to do some pruning on it. I've got a lot of garden work I need to do. It is a little wet right now because we got like two inches of rain last night. I need to burn with the thing all of my, uh, the stuff on my trellises down there and my fences and stuff growing up the garden where it's died, the vines it's left there and start cleaning the garden out for getting ready for spring. Now I've still got a lot of collards, mustards, onions, and turnips that are doing well and I'm going to leave them to you know, till I'm ready to get rid of them and plant something else. Um, now, we may do some tilling in between. There's a lot of hen bit down there in that garden. A lot out here. Good edible plant that's growing right now with the purple flowers. The, the purple dead nettle will start coming out here pretty quick. And I'm sure there's already some in areas here now. Uh, I need to get started on my raised bed because these raised beds behind me, I'm going to do away with, and we're going to be a one long raised bed over here right at the upper side of my garden because it's going to serve two purposes. Uh, let me go over there and I'll tell you about it right, right here. This drops off down a hill. It, it probably drops three to four foot, give or take a foot. I'm guesstimating from right here where I'm standing down to my garden. So what happens is all the water from off my house, from out of the yard funnels right down here and goes down to the other end of my garden and washes. Right now it don't wash bad because there's greenery plants, all that in there. When I till it up, it'll wash all the dirt down through that way. Um, so what I'm gonna do is drag logs up here and build a retaining wall, and I'm gonna peel the logs and burn them and oil them and all that stuff to make them last as long as possible. And I'm gonna build me a wall back there and then backfill the upper side with dirt. So the upper side is gonna become the raised bed from the wall up, and then it will keep rain from washing my garden out as bad. It'll redirect that rain around that end and this end right down here now. I'm sure I'll have consequences of a, of a gully starting over here because there's tracks here. When I drive my buggy out and around the house, I've almost built a road that comes right down through here and going back into the woods, which is okay. That's just how that's going to be probably from now on. So I may wind up having to do something about keeping that from washing out. I don't know because the grass is dying for me driving over it through the winter times. 
So anyway, we're going we're gonna to work on that at some point through the spring. Now, all that's not going to be in this video, but I'm just laying out my plans for what I've got to get done. I've got a tiller sitting over here that the rope is pulled out of. Another one that the front bearing has started going out in. You know, I rebuilt the rear part of my tiller last year and replaced some gears. Well, there's a bearing toward the front end of it that's going out. I'm going to have to tear back into it and replace that before I can use it. So let's prune this wisteria right now. Now I want to get a lot of this that's coming way out this way off. So I'm going to start low, work my way up. may have to cut that just to get it out of there. I don't know. I'm not sure y'all if you can propagate that vine. I want to think you probably can. Oh, I'm going to cut and I'm cutting a good bit out of this because it has gotten quite unruly. It has not been taken care of like I intended for it to. So all of this coming way out, I'm, I'm threatening cutting this whole limb coming out. But I think I'm going to start and I'm going to cut that off. And then I think I'm going to cut it right there. Instead of cutting a whole limb, I leave some stuff to go up. <coughs> what I need to do is I need to come drive me and put me a, a post or something in right here so that it can kind of come up. I can get something together there because I want it to grow up into a tree and then branch out. And that's what my goal is here. I'm going to take some more of this off out of the middle of it. some of these limbs some of this stuff out here the lawnmower i broke with the lawnmower i, I run into it i think i'm gonna quit right there on this for now and i have to haul these limbs off down to the brush pile i may i may see if i can propagate that just to see if i can do it and then we're gonna dig them onions up and there's a few uh, clo garlic cloves I'm gonna move to another bed before I uh, 
tear all this down because we're gonna move the log. I'm gonna take a tractor and a bucket basically and just scoop all that up. The logs are rotten. I'm gonna let the rotten logs be in the bottom of that raised bed, so. Y'all hear that? The first three Martins of the year has just showed up. Let me zoom in on them. I was desperately struggling trying to film them. I can't get them. There's three of them. So what those are, scouts. They show up this time of year, scout everything out, make sure there's places for them to live, and then they go back, and it'll be a couple of weeks, sometimes a few days, sometimes a week. I, it, it sort of depends on the weather to whether when the rest of them show up. So it's always springtime. When I hear that first martin, I mean, it is never no doubt. I'm outside and I hear that sound. In my mind, I know that that is a martin. It is distinct. And that is a sure sign that spring is, is pretty well here. Now, that don't mean that we won't have another cold spell, obviously. Good chances of frost. So anyway, aside from that, the next thing we're going to do right here is I've got this plum bush. That all of these, what I call them, is suckers. They come up at the bottom, so they make good switches for a young boy that won't behave. You can get his attention with one of these. And they long enough that if he runs from you, you can catch him. But the problem with the one that we got is he don't get one of them switches used on him hardly ever. We're doing what the Bible says, spoil the child. Cause we've spared the rod. But what we do is we threaten him a lot instead of actually spanking him. So don't think that we whooping him too awful much. I know y'all love that boy. I do too. But I want to get all this stuff cut off. And that is good enough for that. I got another one over here. I need to trim it up. Y'all, them couple of cabbage heads in there is gonna wind up making a cabbage head before spring gets here, looks like. I'm probably gonna go ahead and add some fertilizer in there. Well, y'all, it looks like the fig bush is gonna make it this year. The one we salvaged last year, well, the two, they start to bud out. You can see these buds right here. And the camera won't focus. I have struggled to really focus on it and blur everything else out, but it ain't cooperating. This bed here has got a bunch of hen bit come up in it and chickweed, which is all edible plants. Um, but there's a couple of cabbage and a collard, and this is my garlic clove. So right here, this is what we fix the prune off. Now what I want to do is keep this where I can get around it with a lawnmower. So I'm cutting some higher up limbs on this one. It has never been pruned. ahead get all of this little stuff off. I'm gonna leave that one big limb over here because it goes up but these over here kind of this little stuff if you don't cut it off now you'll just have to come back and cut it off later 
but when you're going around this stuff with a lawnmower, it gets very aggravating. And y'all may not can even hear me. I talk loud usually, but I know I'm way over here. And them chickens, ah, all right now. Now this plum tree here has more thorns on it than that other one that seems to be. I think one of them is actually probably some type of an apricot. I'm not 100% because I did not buy them from a store with a name. I propagate most everything. And y'all out here, this is at the end of my garden. There's a lot of wild onion and uh, field garlic coming up in some of this. Now the field garlic is the taller, uh, more tubular leaves and the wild onion is the smaller, shorter clumps. A lot of people get all sideways confused in that foraging group, but that is what it is. So you can see out here behind me on them trellises, all that dead stuff. Y'all, that is what I want to burn. And what I'm going to do is when it dries, this wind will dry it in a matter of days. I'll be able to come out here with a, that torch on that gas bottle with a wand and just burn all this stuff up. I need to get my baskets right here out. This is my tomato cages, and I've got a couple I need to pull up, but... I've got them stacked on both ends. I'll move them over here somewhere till I get through plowing and disking. But it is time to get ready for gardening season. I ain't just, I'd rather fish, but hey, I like to garden and we're gonna do it. I've got to clean up my medicinal plant bed as well. You see all this stuff growing up in there? That is goldenrod stalks. I'm gonna probably take a Kaiser blade. Some folks call it a sling blade. I call it a Kaiser blade. And cut it all down. Y'all notice I'm right the opposite of old uh, Carl. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna cut all of that down and clean it up. And uh, probably burn a lot of that stuff. I have got some burning I need to do. So it is like cleaning up time. It ain't time to start planting. I am just gearing up and getting stuff and I'm probably fixing to go through this garden sometime in the next day or so and pull up some of this stuff out of it that's coming on. Feed it to the chickens. Man, they love a lot of this stuff. Instead of just coming through here and cutting it down and doing nothing with it, chickens love to eat it. So that is what we are gearing up for. This is mouse-eared chickweed, y'all. Edible, good for you. <laughs> but good for these fellas right here in this cage, too. The next thing y'all I gotta clean up is my briar patch. I got some limbs and junk out here in it. It is putting on leaves and such. I ought to have a good many blackberries right here this year. So I've got a, a privet hedge that is coming up in here that I gotta get shed of. So let me get this whittled out.
and they probably ain't no getting rid of it. I'll fight this privet hedge from now on because the only way to get rid of it is to cut the roots out. And I probably can't get to them, not without destroying a lot of my blackberry right here. And that thing's wanting it a do rag. Look at it. You see it trying to steal my do rag? Y'all gone. I'm gonna cut it low enough that maybe we can kill the majority of it. So another thing I'm fixing to do right here to solve that problem is my wire. And this right here, y'all, is poke berry. So what you do with your vine, your, yeah, your, your blackberries is you come down here and you make sure you get under everything. Oh, ow! I should have been smart and got me some leather gloves, shouldn't I? I wasn't smart though. I never am. your bra patch in your yard they say it that's a good idea they say it <laughs> well who in their right mind puts a bra patch in the edge of the yard i got a mow around this ow doggone it right in the kneecap all oh, right i got some dog fennel and i don't know what else over here that's gotta come out I don't know what else is in there that needs taken out. I know there's one bush right here that is outside the... I'm gonna cut it. I don't want it getting too unruly because I already can't fight it. Adjust this wire here. I'm going to have to go over and cut some out down yonder.
Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all, I don't believe them growers ever stuck nobody. They was like that Mary woman that had that baby Jesus. Well, that ain't foolproof, y'all, but that helped a lot. I keep, I got some snips. I don't even remember where I bought these. I got a two-pack of them. One's a little smaller. And then I keep my little knife right here when I'm doing this kind of stuff in my pocket. This is a hawk bill, and y'all, it is very good for pruning. Now, this is a rough rider. You pick what brand you want. I just wanted a cheap one that would get the job done. I had never had a hawk bill knife. Now, I would probably go get me a case if I was going to buy me a show enough one. I was going to use a lot, but no more than I use one, y'all. I sharpen it a lot because I cut the dirt. I towed it around a good bit this time of year, like I said, and I just stick it in my watch pocket and I got a string on it because I don't want to do away with my other pocket knives. So right now I'm toting like four knives. get all my paraphernalia collected up here and i got a mess i gotta rake up this junk and i'm probably gonna throw this bigger stuff in a burn type pile but i wanted to get them hedges and junk that was in there because they'll become trees before lord i done lost my glasses look at that i was doing a little reading this morning had them in my shirt pocket oh uh, if you see behind me i got a good crop of wheat coming on I don't think it is. No, uh, it's hopefully it'll grow and start seeding out here before long. It, it is very thick. This is what I am going to put around my tomatoes this year as a weed barrier. It worked the best, way better than pine straw. I mean, like 10 to 1 better than pine straw. So that is why the wheat is there. Not to mention the chickens will eat a lot of it. Uh, I'll, I'm not going to clean these beds out because we're going to absolutely do away with them. So I'm, I've got some fig limbs that I may cut off and you can propagate them. Y'all figs are by far the easiest thing to propagate. Get you a jug of any kind, container, whatever. Get one that'll hold water. Don't get one that'll drain out. Put you some dirt down in it. Get it good and sopping wet. Stand them fig limbs up in it and put your grocery sack over the top of it. Make you a mini greenhouse. Hold that humidity in there and y'all within a month or two, you'll have roots running everywhere and you can go plant them fig bushes or bite anywhere. Uh, I'm probably fixing to do some and I'll, uh, I'll show you a little of it here. And I got several I keep losing my dead burn glasses. Uh, these low ones has got to be cut. So I'm going to get that one. That one. And I'm going to let us see it. I'm gonna, we're going to propagate them few. I'm going to get this other one. It is bad low. That is plenty. I figure we might as well do this right quick. So I'm cutting the dead tops off. Oh, uh, so what I want is something, and you can make them however long you want. I, I like them about a foot long. Six inches is plenty. Oh, uh, cause they're gonna grow. So I'm just cutting me some, and I cut an angle. I don't know if there's another one in that. That is dead up there. We'll try it and see. I think it's dead that part. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And that's good. Okay. 
So here I have got some dirt. This is not good pot and soil. So let me get over here. That way I can make a mess. So I've got my bucket. We're just gonna dump this dirt in there. That is some roots, and that is a busted up bucket it needed doing away with anyway. Now this is a coffee can that does not have drain holes in it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I see I've got an angle cut on every one of these. Stick them down in there with the roots on them. Okay, with that right there. Now I come in and I want to drench it good. A lot of water. Let that soak down in there. We'll add some more water. Okay, I said grocery bag, any kind of a clear bag, the, the white or clear. Uh, now this clear is gonna get a good bit hotter. The white is usually probably the better. Pull that over the top and, and seal it down. I'm gonna add actually some more water. I want it soupy. And then this is gonna help keep this moisture in there. And I'm gonna tuck the sides up under this bucket and there's going I don't know if I want to put it right in that window I think I'm going to set it uh, 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 uh. this table right here I normally turn into somewhat of a greenhouse anyway I'm going to set these right over here put my plexiglass back down here for the time being I use this to start a lot of seeds and things, so there's another bucket of dirt I could start something in, I reckon. Um, I'm going to move that cage when I put some more plants. I'll put all my plants out here on this eventually. So anyway, thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors Little Garden Spring Prep. Thank y'all for watching. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.